Let's talk about for loops and while loops. Let's talk about for loops and while loops. Let's talk about for loops and while loops. Alright, we found us back in Telegram once more, and in this tutorial, we're gonna be talking about loops, of course, as you have clearly heard from that amazing intro. And why would you even need loops? I will give you a great example of why this is actually going to be a very, very important thing. And that is the following. I want you to output every number from 0 to 99. That's all you have to do. It's as simple as that. Now you might be like, oh, that's I I have learned a lot of things, right? I know how to do my system print outline. I can output a number over here and I have learned from you. You can press control D to duplicate this and I'm just going to duplicate this and you will very, very clearly see uh, that this is going to be a long ride over here, right? Especially after I'm going to be like, actually delete all of the uneven numbers. I only want the even numbers to be output. So you're going to go back and you're going to like delete every like second line. And then, you know, I come back like half an hour later. I'm like, you know what? I was wrong. It was actually the other way around. And then at that point, you're just going to be like, okay, you know what? Frick you. That's not, this is not working. Right. So as you change the requirements, you will have to change the code so drastically that having this insane complexity just doesn't make any sense. Similarly, if I'm like, well, now I, what I actually want you to do is I want you to output all of the years between 1000 and 2000, but only the leap years and do it with the current system so that we're not getting like crazy. Right. So now I'm like output years between 1000 and 2000, but only leap years. Before, I might have been like, well, actually just output like a thousand and then a thousand and one and a thousand and two. And then I'm like, actually, I only want the leap year. So now you'll be like, okay, so it's a thousand and four and then a thousand and eight. And then you just continue to go. And then you're like, well, you have to remember all the rules. But, you know, this is going to this is going to take forever. So obviously, this is not how we want to do it. We want to do it with a for loop. And a for loop is a very, very nice and easy thing to basically say, hey, this piece of code, do that X amount of times. So for example, we can say four and you can see, there we go. We then want to put in a parentheses and inside of those parentheses goes a very specific number of things. The first one is we define an integer inside of those parentheses. Usually it is called I. If you have a singular one, you can also call it X. You can in theory call it whatever you want. You can call it count, but we're going to call it I. This is going to be equal to zero and we're going to end this with a semicolon. After the semicolon, we're going to say i is smaller than 100. And then we're going to end this with a semicolon as well. And then we'll say i++. plus plus. After the closing parentheses, we then have a curly bracket. And then hitting the enter button will generate the second curly bracket over here. And everything inside of these curly brackets is going to be executed. Well, a couple of times. Namely, it's going to do, do the following, right? So what do these crazy numbers mean? What do the different statements in here mean? What this means is that we're initializing an integer called i that is going to be accessible inside of the for loop, right? So in between these two curly brackets, the i, i is going to be accessible. That's going to be zero, initialized to zero. Then we're asking, hey, is i smaller than zero? If this is true, go for it and execute everything inside of this for loop, right? After we're done, we're saying, okay, now what I want you to do is do this, and that is increase i by one, right? So we've seen this previously. i plus plus means i plus equals one, or i equals i plus one, basically just incrementing i by one. And therefore, what's going to happen is that each time we pass through this for loop, right, each time we're executing everything in between these two curly brackets, what's going to happen is that i is going to continually increase and increase and increase. And it's going to keep asking, hey, is i smaller than 100? Is i still smaller than 100? And as long as this is true, we're all good to go, right? We're all good to go. And all of a sudden, i is going to be 100. And then we'll be like, wait a second, we out of here, we're done. And then the for loop is done. So we will see this by basically printing out i. That's all we want to print out. And this is going to print out. Let's actually do a little bit of a of a divider over here just so that we will be able to see this. And this is going to output for us everything from 0 to 99. So let's take a look and you will see that if we look at the divider over here, there's the divider and we start at 0 and it's going to keep incrementing and incrementing and incrementing until we reach 99, right? And then i is going to be increased to 100 and we're asking, hey, is i smaller than 100? And it's going to say, no. So then we're not even going to execute it the last time. If you want to take the 100 with you, then you can do a smaller equals over here instead of just a smaller. And that will then also get you the 100 as well. 
right? And then if we were to say, hey, we now don't want a 0 to 99, you know, we only want like the uneven numbers or something, let's do another divider. And what I can do is I can select this, press control C and then control V to paste it in just so that it's a little bit easier, right? And then here, we're just then going to, we're then going to say, hey, if I is divisible by two and that does not equal zero, then we know, hey, 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 this is now an uneven number. And now we're only printing out those that are inside of here. And you can already see we're starting to fuse different things together, right? We have we have the modulo operator, we have a boolean expression over here, right, with the unequals, we have an if statement, we have a for loop, so you can see that we're stacking every single thing that we've learned so far all together into one thing to build a, you know, a primitive but complicated machine over here that is going to be able to print out all of the uneven numbers between 0 and 99 in this case. Pretty freaking cool. But of course, this is not where we stop, okay? Where we stop is with the leap years over here. Now, this is a thing that you can also try for yourself before you basically take a look at this code. It might be really useful. I can give you the for loop at least. We're going to basically start at 1000 over here because, of course, this is a normal initialization. You don't have to start this at zero. You can start at whatever you want and you can also go to whatever you want. In this case, we're going to go to 2000, of course. And then in here, you, of course, need some sort of if statement that determines when is it going to be a leap year. Now, the first thing should be very, very straightforward, but the others might be a little more complicated. Let me write it out. So, of course, once again, you can pause the video over here, try it out for yourself and see where you might end up. And what I have done is the following. I have I is divisible by four. If this is the case, right, and this is equal to zero, then we know we are in a leap year. However, there are certain leap years that are going to be skipped. For that, we need to also have another Boolean expression, and that also has to be true. And what has to be true is that I cannot be divisible by 100 because actually every 100 year you skip the leap year because otherwise we would drift out of the seasons in the opposite direction. However, you have to put a leap year back in every 400 years. We're then going to say, or if I is divisible by 400 and that is going to be a zero, then it's divisible by 400, then we can actually output the leap year again. And we can basically confirm this by going in over here Printing this, printing this out and you can see 2000 is a leap year because it is divisible by 400. However, 1900 you can see was skipped because that is not divisible by 400, but it is divisible by 100, meaning that it is not a leap year. Very interesting indeed. And there you go. So that is going to be pretty awesome. I will comment this out just because it's otherwise going to spam the console every time. So that is okay because we have another type of loop and that is the while loop. While I personally am not the biggest fan of it, just because it is prone to being very easily uh, making an endless loop and then your program is stuck and then you basically have to open the task manager and, and end your program like that, uh, it can still be quite useful. So let's say we have a health variable over here and we're going to say, hey, while health is bigger than zero, right? So let's say while we're alive, quote unquote, right? I want a system.print out and I want to say player still alive with, and then we can say, for example, health and we can say HP over here. There you go, right? But while this gets output, I then want to say health minus minus, basically decreasing the health over here. And if I were to do this, you can see now we're basically outputting 10, 9, and so on and so forth until we reach 1. And then, of course, this is no longer true. And then we're going to jump out of the while loop. One example of this as well is very interesting, and that's going to be, I'm just going to duplicate the while loop, and I'm going to reset the health over here to 10 again. And what we're going to do is we're then going to say, well, you know what, actually, when we reach 6 over here, right, so if health is 6, I actually just want to continue with the loop. So we're just going to call the continue keyword over here. And afterwards, actually, the player is going to be losing the game once health reaches 2, and then I want to break out of the loop. So continue and break are two keywords that are very important. We've seen break previously for the switch statement. However, in a loop, it works a little bit differently. So the way that this works is when the continue keyword gets called, basically, then we're everything afterwards inside of the loop is going to be not executed. And we're going to jump back to the beginning of the loop, basically getting another pass until we either hit another continue statement or until we reach the end of the loop and go do another roundabout or until the statement here is no longer true. However, if we hit a break, then we're going to immediately break out of the loop, basically discarding everything that comes afterwards, but also not doing another round over here. So basically, we're going to break out of the loop and there you go. So we can see this by looking at this, right? So we have 10 HP over here. Now the six skipping doesn't do anything, right? So what we would have to do is we would have to put this at the end of the loop for it to actually take a look at this. So let's take a look. So you can see between 7 and 5, we're actually no longer outputting the 6 because 
because when health equals six, we're just going to continue. So we're going to jump back over here. Health is going to be decreasing again. Health is then five and then health five gets output. There you go. And that is the for loop as well as the while loop. They are once again, extremely important topics and structures to know in coding. And I cannot recommend enough. Once again, play around with them as often as you would like. All of the code in here is as always available to you in the description below. GitHub repository and a gist as well. Highly recommended to take a look at. And next time, we'll actually have a little bit of an exercise for you to really test out the skills and everything that we've learned so far. Hope to see you in that video as well. So, yeah.